that is Hans Zimmer, uh, Night on Arrakis. Um, we got to talk about a speaker. And if you've watched this channel, actually, if you've been following me since before this channel started, in fact, when I went to figure out when how old my channel was to celebrate the 10-year anniversary, the Vanatu T1s were the speaker that I indicated, okay, I, I took video, I wasn't even calling myself Z reviews at that point, but I took video, and that was my first official review. Even if it wasn't on the main, on the, the current channel you're watching, it was on the older channel. That was it, May 2013. This is a T1 Encore Plus. So I did the T1, the T1 Encore, years later, and now, 10 years after the fact, it's still the same fucking speaker, but hammered to, I don't want to say perfection, because there are some flaws, but $669 on Amazon, so if you're not interested in something at that price point, you could leave. Um, they look almost identical to the originals, except they've improved the tweeter with a, um, a waveguide. They've uh, sussed out the driver. If you don't know, these are a passive radiator and they're self-powered. Now, how do I put this? So listening to Hans Zimmer, whatever else shuffles to next. Wait a second, wait, just wait. That's not them. That's the subble for helping. The HSU 15 inch, which is behind the curtain, is working with them. And I only plugged that in today. This morning, in fact. I'm like, i got to give these Vanatus their run through. I actually, it's been so long since the T1 Encores, the original Encores, not the original original. I think I sent those back to them. This is back when I was sending shit back. But I actually sold the Encores like two and a half years ago to a friend who really loved the Vanatus when he heard them. And he bought them for me. And I'm like, here you go, friend. You can have them. I'll just wait for Vanatu to come out with something new. My, my other issue with Vanatu is I keep redoing the same thing. But it's kind of like... Uh, you know, a swordsmith. You don't go to a swordsmith who's world famous and then come back to him five years later and be like, well, why, why aren't you selling guns? You just want the sword and his improved sword. So this is Vanatu's improved sword. Things that they've changed, um, nothing. Still the same two colors. You got the cherry wood or black. I would highly recommend the cherry. It's very nice, very subtle. These speakers are, if nothing else, Subtle and boring. These are the speakers you could sneak past the old lady. Or old man, I don't care, I don't judge. Like if you put the covers on them, here's the thing. You put the covers on these, and at their price point, they're not super expensive. They're you know, 670 bucks on Amazon. You can get B-stock ones on their website for a little bit cheaper. But you look at them and it's just like, hey, you got a speaker. Cool, you take the covers off, which are just some magnets with some felt and some plastic and some very, very basic things, which I could. And all of a sudden you get like that silver, tit I don't know if it's titanium or aluminum, but it's, it's very striking. And it used to be just that and a tweeter. Now you have that and the dome is recessed. Now, when I pulled this driver out, cause I pulled it out in previous things, the hole that holds that barely fits the magnet in. The magnet structure for that thing is is the same size as the driver, five and a quarter, and it fits inside. Now, this one is the passive unit, so you just get a wire going to it. Very, 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 very long. Here, hook that up there. Very long wire to go from that to that. It's like a twenty foot cable, which is perfect. It used to be they used to come with too short a cable. You had to go onto their website, special order and extension. And they're like, fuck it, give me a 20 foot cable. Just wrap it up, roll it up. It gives you great flexibility if you want to have this in your living room, which we're going to talk about the placement and the near field versus, I guess this would be far field. Just dropped it on the floor because, you know, this is Z reviews and we everything here is very professional. As far as near field versus far field, we'll talk about, but. Where they are right now, you could have that wire run down, back, over, over, up, and in, and still have like three feet to spare. So they're giving you plenty of space for placement options. 
Uh, I know like the Klipsch sevens and nines came with a, a, long, a length that was like 10 feet and then like another six foot extension. So still not as long as this gives you, and they give that in you two pieces and you have to like connect them together. These are subtle speakers. These are speakers that you don't assume are gonna be very, very, they, Vanity is one of the only companies, small startup companies, because there's two guys working out of the West Coast. That's it's been the same two guys working out of the West Coast. And they had this and they have the T0. I have the, actually have the T0 Encore Plus, which I have in a box over there, which I have to set up and use. And that's more of a desk oriented thing. But there's people who are watching who are like, see us, desk. And I'm like, yes, yes. That is, we will probably, when I get the near field desk finalized and the shit's not falling down like it currently is, um, I might not, not re-review them, but certainly touch on them again from a full near field review, maybe on the second channel. I'm not using my second channel enough. If you haven't seen Zio's second channel, subscribe to it because maybe if you go to the uh, the link tree with all my other things, which is link tree slash Zio's Pantera, you might find some stuff. All right, so subtlety. Subtlety and looks. You leave the covers on, they're the most unassuming fucking little tiny boxes you've ever seen. I'm gonna be asked to compare them directly to the Klipsch 5s. I think on their own, the Klipsch 5s are more exciting. Klipsch 5s are fantastic speakers. The horn, the thing, the DSP correction, the knob on top, they're, they're, you can get the McLaren edition, which is kind of bombastic. This, this is more of a subtle, gentle, kind of like, not subdued. Well, it's subdued until you plug a sub in. So here's the thing, I'm gonna unplug the sub. We're gonna talk for a hot minute about subwoofers because the back of the speaker, and I guess I should pick it up and kind of show you, even though I just cleaned it all off beautifully with rubbing alcohol, which is a, a flu I might do an entire video on fluids, by the way. Just see us his favorite fluids. That's going to get clicks. <sighs> all right. They've squeezed a lot of stuff into the small panel because this passive radiator is sitting here. Power plug is a figure eight. Power switch is here. Uh, line to the other speaker. This is to other speaker. Uh, this is the... Uh, coaxial digital input, which is what my signal is. You also get an option of optical as an input, USB as an input. You get a USB service port for doing firmware updates, or you could just use it if you need to power something USB. You get, all right, and so this is what fucked up the entirety of this channel for a decade. You get a switch that lets you pick if this speaker with all the connections is the left speaker or the right speaker, and it's just a little switch. Why doesn't every fucking speaker have that? They've had this for a decade. Some no-name brand. Vanatu isn't Klipsch. Vanatu isn't Polk. Vanatu isn't SVS. They're just two guys that made a cool name, and they have the Switch forever. So why is everyone... Why am I still complaining about the fucking Switch not being there? Anyway, so they have the Switch for left and right. you got a pair program button, which is more important than you think. It is for pairing Bluetooth. You put it into a Bluetooth mode, and you can switch it around. Um, but you also need programming in the things, which we'll talk about the things also, there's things. Um, your analog 3.5 input, for whatever reason, your sub out. Um, don't want to talk about the sub out right now. Let's talk about the sub out right now, because in case I'm losing some of you, like Zios, I, I want speakers that are exciting and, and can fill a whole room. I've been using these standalone as themselves for two and a half weeks down here. And... They were good. They were okay. They were okay. And then I did the, well, we gotta, I guess we got to divert from the sub thing to something else. The programming thing. These speakers were designed by programmers. And if you're a nerd, you're going to be like, wait, say that again, Zios? Okay, so here they are on their site. Um, here they are on Amazon for $6.69. And here is the table of contents for programming the speaker. Did you ever set an old VCR or an old alarm clock that had like weird hold this and then touch this button? That's what this does. So even though it has a remote, which is in my pants, that is chock full of buttons. Same remote, by the way, since the beginning of time. And I would love an update, but they're very happy with it. Um, we'll talk about this. In fact, I'm going to leave it here to bother me so I remember to talk about it. This, you're going to have to print out at least once so that you know what you're doing because there's instructions on how to use it. And then there's, because it's here, see, see all this? This is everything you need to, to program 
the thing. You need the three knobs in the back, volume, bass, and treble, which I didn't point out the knobs are volume, bass, and treble, or volume, treble, and bass. You need the power switch, the pair program button, and the left and right switch. Are you following me? So you buy these speakers, you get options that are hidden in like the BIOS. It, it sleeps usually after 20 minutes, right? And that could get a little bit annoying if you if you constantly watch TV, you're pausing Netflix, you go to the kitchen to make popcorn. 20 minutes is actually a beautiful amount of time. Speakers that make it 10, like I know someone who bought the Klipsch 5s and it sleeps after 10 minutes and you have to go into the app, the Bluetooth app or the control app to shut that off because the speaker, you know, you pause, 10 minutes later, the speaker falls asleep. You come back to your show, you hit space bar, because people's mouths start moving and you don't hear it because the speaker went to sleep. So if you want to disable that, if 20 minutes sleeping is still too short and you just want to disable sleep mode and keep the amps running all the time, which is not super bad for it. It's just, you know, a lot of times people want things to go to sleep. You can disable sleep mode. Here's how you do that. You go in the back of your unit. You shut it off with the power switch. You set your volume knob to middle. You set your treble knob to minimum, you set your bass knob to minimum, and you set your left-right switch to left. Then you hold the pair program button, then you flip the power switch on, then you release the button, and it blinks three times, and you... Wait, I said that wrong. That's how you enable sleep mode. You would set the left-right switch to right, and that would turn off sleep mode. And then once that happens, you could set all your knobs back to where they belong, and your speakers now have disabled sleep mode. But you have to do that. You have to literally... to do that. That's the motion. It's the, the snow piercer motion. Um, Remote enable key must be proceed Bluetooth paired. So the remote. Oh, we got good. We got to buy sack to the remote for a second. I don't hate this remote. It's just weird. So you get your volume control. Luckily, the, my biggest complaint about remotes is when I when I pick it up and put my thumb down, it's not on the volume. Guess where it is? Boom, right on the volume. Thank God. You get your mute. You get your auto input select, which usually works. Which you can I think disable in here somewhere. Um, Yes, you could reset auto switch in sleep, retain current input in sleep. There's, there's settings, analog, USB, Bluetooth, optical, coaxial. So all these are above this box. You see this box? It's got the circle around it or the square around it. This is Bluetooth pair, function one, treble down, treble up, treble mid, bass down, bass up, bass mid. So there's an enable button. So if I hit bass up right now, which is not facing me, but if I hit bass up, nothing's going to happen. If it treble up, nothing's going to happen. You have to hit enable first, then you could adjust it, which in one hand is annoying that you have to remember to do that. But on the other hand, you don't accidentally fucking change your settings all the time or put it in Bluetooth pairing mode ever. Because you have to unlock and enable this whole series of buttons. If you don't like that, volume max, treble min, thing min, thing right. To hit the pro pair program button, turn the speaker back on, let go, blink three times, you've now done that. The actual ones I want to talk about, because the, the Bluetooth disabling, um, you could probably do, I would probably do that if I was using these in the living room, and I didn't want my friend showing up and having a pop-up, and like, I'll pair to the... USB charging port will turn off in sleep mode, so that you, like, this whole thing is stuff you can change with the programming. But there are two things that I... It kind of upsets me, but I kind of get it. Because when you get these speakers, they're literally gimped. They're gimped for normies. These speakers are for people who are watching this video. Because when you get them, there's two things turned on by default. Shelved DSP and compressors are enabled. Now, a shelved DSP basically means the DSP, the digital signal processing that's going on in them, is... Um, cutting off low end and keeping you from blowing up the speakers. And if you plug a sub in, it does a certain uh, su certain like level instead of something else. If you shut that shit off, when I did these both at the same time, so I actually didn't compare, I shut off the shell, I put on the flat DSP setting, which is min, mid, min, right, on, and then compressors. 
Now, they give you a warning when you read this about the compressors and about the shelf DSPs. You're basically unlocking the full potential of the speaker. But again, I said it's for normies to have that stuff on because normies are gonna hit the volume up, up, up until it explodes. And if you disable compression and you put on the flat DSP where it goes as flat as flat as flat will go, you can distort this speaker. You can actually take it to the point where it's like bruh, bruh, and it doesn't sound very good if you're pushing it too hard. The key, let me Windows key M this so we get back to waifus on the background and to music. That sounds amazing, facing backwards. Holy fuck, did I just think of a second channel video? What if I just reflect speakers into the wall and listen to them? Because it is a hard, sir. Echo set reminder. Um, Actually, Zio's watching this in the future. We'll see this part of the video and he'll go like, you know what, that's a good idea. Let's pick a speaker and shove it at the wall. See what's fun. That's the best part about the second channel. These reviews on this channel have to be very serious, as serious as Zio's can be, anime feet um but they also have to be like product review i've only got nine slots a month now with the new algorithm so i have to be on the ball and i have to do things i can't have much fun so please follow me on the second channel where we can have some more fun but let me turn that around now that i've explained this by the way when you start using the remote your bass treble and volume knobs mean nothing except if you touch them then it reverts back to whatever they're set to so if you want to use a remote basically you can only use a remote if you want to use the knobs in the back, you should only use that. It, it's, you have to pick and choose. You can't, it won't like, in other words, if I had to turn the bass down, that knob is gonna still be there. Bass down, and then as soon as you touch that knob, it's gonna go, oh, bass medium, bass medium. So, oh, where was I? God, this is, explaining these speakers is a pain in the ass. So, been using them for two weeks, as they were without the compressors disabled and the other th and the shelf DSP enabled, and they were just okay. They, they they would be perfectly acceptable. They were acceptable speakers, but they weren't exceptional. You turn off the shelf DSP and go to flat, and you take off the compressors, and all of a sudden they open up. All of a sudden that tweeter makes the most sense. All of a sudden they can reach the real low lows. The problem is in this setup where I'm 10 feet away from the speakers, I wanted more volume. So if I played them quietly, they were beautiful. If you're running them on a desk, if you're running them near field, turn those two settings off and you'll be absolutely satisfied because you can't turn them up loud enough to get to the, the danger zone. Danger zone, danger zone. Apparently corn breaks them off. Is Danger. What is it doing? Muse Bliss. Hold on, hold on. I got, I got it. It's Kenny Loggins. I'm not gonna do Kenny Loggins. I want to type in D A N G E R space Z O N E. One Punch Man battle. How is it a different song? Every time. All great music, by the way. All right, we'll do Kenny. Kenny, how many Kennys? What is it? K-E-N-N-Y. Lenny, Ken, Lenny, Lenny Kravitz. All right, forget Danger Zone. We'll go back to it. Um, I just, I'm finishing the last season of Archer and I'm, I'm real sad because it's such a great fucking show. These speakers in a big space. I just talked about them on a desk. Absolutely fucking phenomenal when you shut the DSP and things off. I can't wait to actually, I'll probably set them up almost permanently on that desk setup until I'm doing another near field speaker and then it'll go back to these and ignore this because this is a whole different set of fucking needs. In a space like this, you can absolutely, if you're a mild-mannered individual and you're just watching TV at normal volumes and you're not trying to run explosions, if you are trying to run explosions, leave the shell DSP on, leave the compressor on, or one or the other, switch back and forth and, and try out different flavors, see what you can actually uh, live with. Because I'm a psychopath and I can't live with anything that isn't completely free. Gotta be free, man. Gotta be free. When I shut off the things and I started pushing it, I started getting 
like I started hitting the limitations of this little speaker. And it is a violent little speaker. These things get down to like 35. Hooking up a sub, and here's here's the mo here's when I started this review. When I re when my 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 bo blood boiled and I was like, it's time to do the review, Zeus. And I would let me put on a song that let me put a Mark Rib. I'm gonna fucking hit Control F. Mark Ribier. Why did it? Is there another keyboard being compressed right now? This is the weirdest shit ever. Like, I didn't hit anything that should have minimized that. It's got to be. I have a second keyboard that's got to just be fucking with it. Something's very broken. When I plugged in the subwoofer, I'll hit Control F. Let's see if I just hit F. No, so Control is being pressed. M A R C space R I B. Where's Mark Ribier? Huh. That's fucking weird. Mark Violin. There it is. R E. I thought it was Mark Ribier. Here we go. This came from YouTube, so it should be all right. So I was playing music, and I'm like, all right, I'll, I have this uh, DBX Go Rack, which sends, I have multiple signals coming into it, and then it monetizes them, and I can send it out to two different subs, and currently only have one sub back there, which is the giant Murder Ball uh, HSU VX TX 15, a big one. Take the cord, run it over. I gotta come all the way to this side. If I wanted to, I could put it on that side and flip the switch. And as soon as you plug this in to the sub out, volume increases significantly. The volume of the speakers increases significantly. If I'm gonna give any praise to this setup at all and to Vanatu and for the reasons they've been doing this shit for decade, they have the best subwoofer integration into a powered speaker I've ever fucking heard. Heard. The way that they're dividing the signal up and raising the volume, cutting off the frequencies here, and sending out to a sub, which sounds like a really simple operation and should all be great. Klipsch doesn't do it as well. Triangle doesn't do it as well. I'm trying to think of other speakers that just give you a sub out. Canto, none of them are as good. I've never heard a blending of sound so natural. And I'm not going into like a normal subwoofer. That's a fucking monster. It took a little bit of tweaking on this to go from like not to like 85%. But do you hear it? How clean and natural that is? That's beautiful. I'm so glad I have some music I could play on stream that isn't just copyright-free bullshit music. I'm sorry if I was like, just play copyright-free music, Zeus. No. And here's the thing. We've now, since we plugged the sub in, and you can plug in any sub. I'll link, Zeus, link three or four subwoofers in the description that you recommend. We've now unlocked volume potential. Not, holy shit. Now you can watch movies with these in a big space. As soon as you offload the bass, and one of the reasons for the Vanatus in general, I'll just keep that running. One of the reasons for the Vanatus in general is they do such great low end on their own. But if you put up, if you shut off the compressors, if you shut off the shelf DSP and you go flat, and you really unlock the potential for the sound quality in these, which is spectacular now with that new tweeter. Like it's perfect imaging. Once you plug a sub in, any sub, and you offload that need, these speakers go fucking berserk. I'm gonna change tracks. I can't. What the fuck? I think that's from We're Outside 3 or 4. If you look up Mark Ribier, R-E-B-I-L-L-E-T. He's the uh, Loop Daddy. You gotta know Loop Daddy. I saw him live. Fucking phenomenal. He crowd surfed for 250 feet, and I, I touched his body. And then he went all he went out and all the way back to the stage and never, never had to do anything. Fucking God amongst men. Anyway, he did a bunch of live streams in different parts of New York City. And I think it was either 3 or 4. We're Outside 3 or We're Outside 4. A dude, random dude. 
where the violin just shows up and starts fucking jamming with him. What is your name? My name is Varta. I, Varta. I've been to do that uh, a couple of years now. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm your fan, basically. So. All right. Once you plug a subwoofer into this, that $600 price tag, $670, it seems a little steep, Zeos. No, fuck that. Throw a $400 subwoofer in with this. $1,000 or a little bit over $1,000. I don't think you could find a 2.1 system in the world that beats them. Unlock the fucking compressors. Unlock the shelf DSPs. Be cautious with it. Plug in a subwoofer, as capable a subwoofer as you want. Go get, I'll link to the HSU, obviously, but they make smaller ones. There's a reason they go to audio shows, that consistently Vanatu is at audio shows showing these things off. Because they're they're worthy of it. You go to rooms and there's $20,000 amplifiers and $75,000 speakers and there's a $19,000 DAC, and they sound all right. You go into the Vanity room and it's $670 for these new ones in Cherry. And then they just usually have like a, a meh sub. I would love if if D Dr. Hasu, HSU, just, hey, here you go. Here's one of my 12s. Throw that shit in the middle. Throw a real, make the room a half room of half Vanity, half HSU. Because the potential between the, the two setups is fucking insane. Dude, you're dope as fuck. You're dope as fuck. Can you, can you do something for me real quick before you go? A sustained um, D? Can you do like a, just a sustained D? D, I'm, just a sustained... I actually... Rec this is a YouTube audio thing that I just cut the fucking section out of it. It's so good. Skip ahead a little bit. I'll play this to the end of time. The two, the, we should probably talk about how they sound, like, sound-wise. Because I'm giving you this, like, immense fucking review. And I haven't, I don't think I've spoken much. So the tweeters, with the waveguide being sunken back and sort of projected, do exactly that. They project better than the old ones. The old ones were flush mount, which meant the treble basically went everywhere in a circle. And that's fine. Except there's a certain thing about when you waveguide a tweeter, which actually looks very reminiscent of this tweeter, just shoved way back in there. When you direct the sound, you get to control it a little better. There's nothing wrong with a flush mount tweeter. The, the, the boot carts here are a flush mount tweeter. But Vanatu is just constantly on that forge, just hammering. Little, little tiny, little, little, little delicate adjustments. I need this to happen. I need that to happen. I need there to be an orange LED when I touch the button. Orange, not blue. The only, actually there is a blue LED on the back there, which I'm not 100% sure of that list of things. It tells me I can undo it, but blue tack, just a piece of fucking poster tack on the back of that will undo it. Because at night, it does light that wall up blue. It's like a flashlight. At least it's in the back and not in the front. These speakers are great. These speakers are great. They project sound. They, there is an improvement every time I hear them from the Vanatu T1s to the Encores, which incre increased the, 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 the volume they could produce to now the, uh, the Encore Plus with better sound projection. And it's got to be an update to the, to the subwoofer handling. It's got to be. Because I didn't take note of it last time. I plug it in and the subwoofer made noise. Now it blends fucking perfectly. Whatever they've done to, to integrate the sound cutoff through the DSPs to send it out is phenomenal. Phenomenal cosmic power. Itty bitty living space. Just want to sit on this little subwoofer and just have just have a day. We, that violin. we just said we got a violin in there now. So dope. Hey, wow, look at all you guys. Mark Rubier got me through COVID, by the way. Like, I found him at 50,000 subs, and now he's at, like, two and a half million in the beginning of COVID. So, yeah, no, I'll, I'll just shuffle. Oh, epic score. Good, we could play this. I actually hear rattling, but it's the plastic on the ceiling over there. It just... And if I unplug the sub... So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to unplug the sub. Make sure I'm not going to shock anything. You hear the volume go right down, and now... Now the 
those speakers are trying real hard. In fact, if I move them closer to the wall, because they're still relatively far away from this wall, it's like a foot and a half. If I move these even closer because of the passive radiator, it would increase the base output of these, which is again, when you're on a desk, you don't need a sub. You absolutely don't. You don't need the extra volume and you certainly won't need the low end unless you need to get down to 20 hertz instead of like 35 or 39, whatever these can actually do on their own. So I'm gonna, I am gonna. I say this, absolutely fucking worth it. They should be charging double. It's one of those companies that after going through so many iterations of high Swede, of clip stuff and triangle stuff and all the powered monitors have come from this fucking building and this basement I know that they're underselling these. For, for the amount of work they've put into them and how honed they are, they should absolutely be charging more than they're, than they're doing. These should be $1,000 speakers since day one. That said, if they were charging more and had a little bit more income per sale, they would probably have a new speaker on the horizon. I haven't heard anything about it. I would love, could you imagine, just a six and a half inch version of these, or, my absolute dream would be a tower version. Just a little tower, nothing, just, you know what? Use the same driver, use the same tweeter, make it about yay tall, and just six and a half straight down to the floor, all DSP corrected. If they really wanted to go nuts, they could update to have the wireless transfer and have both ends be plugged in. Just, I beg you, Vanatu, give me something new that isn't, because literally they're running out of room on the fucking thing to be like, Vanatu, T1, transparent one, encore plus revision two. Like what are the, where, how much are they gonna add to that name? I want a new speaker from them because I love them as a brand. The little, the little T-Zeros, I can't wait to like actually, cause I actually did the sound demo for them already, but I have another review. I have another sound demo for these yet. There are sound demos, by the way, available only to patrons and subscribers, subscribers, so I can use things that aren't just Epic Score and Mark Ribier, although that's really all you need is Mark Ribier. But um, if you want to hear these things, I will probably do that sometime in the future. As of right now, it's not recorded and I have to set up for a party, so. But please, Vanatu, please people, support Vanatu. They're a small little company. Currently, these are sold out on their site, but there's still some on Amazon. Support them and tell them every time you buy something, when's the big one coming? When's the big one coming? I'm gonna I'm gonna force you to tell them that you want them to engineer something big because we're stagnating here, but they keep making great the same speaker keeps getting better. But I want I just want it. I want I want that I want to upset the wife. I want a speaker that actually upsets the wife, all right? I want it to be so big, so brash, so loud that it just destroys any hope that your wife's gonna come home tonight. She's just, she's out. She's out with the mailman, all right? I wanna see them go nuts. I wanna see what a Vanatu engineered speaker after a night of heavy drinking and partying at a strip club will produce. And another thing is like, the. Black, no one wants to get the black speaker so boring. And the cherry is nice, but it's still subtle and so understated. I really want to see hair down fucking nuts Vanatus. Because the amount of clarity and focus these speakers have and like how they sound, they need to merge with like the Klipsch. And the video is over. They're adult audiophile speakers that'll fit in any room under any decor and they'll be nice and just just laid back links in the description um patreon subscribe star do support this channel please help out um if you can i know it's january or february i don't know when this is probably january uh check out vanatu if there's a show coming to you if there's exponent in chicago if there's florida audio expo in february Exponent is usually springtime. New, I don't think New York Audio Show anyone goes to that anymore. I think they had a room at Capital Audio Fest. Go hear these speakers. Or they have, I think, an in-home trial. I haven't double-checked that, but I think that if you buy them from their website, you get an in-home trial. Get them, unlock them, hook them up to a sub, even a cheap sub, to unlock the full volume potential. You'll keep them. You'll keep them. That's what it comes down to. Once you hear them, you keep them. It's one of those speakers. I just hope for the future there's something more exciting. 
because they're so grown up and I need to let their hair down a little bit. Wait, hold on. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, Patreon and subscribe to our subscribers, $5 a month. See reviews early. A lot of these reviews are now on there for, I'm scheduled out for like three weeks. So if you want to see three weeks worth of reviews before they've aired, Patreon and Subscribestar will do that. Also, my Patreon and Subscribestar have all of my IM reviews that are in waiting free. So if you go there, you can see videos that will be released on the Inner Fetish channel now. You can just see all my IM reviews now um, without paying for a goddamn thing. They'll just be unlocked posts. Uh, five dollars a month that you see reviews early, participate in yard sales, which these will probably not end up in. I did that for the last set. I sold them after I had them for like two years and then I missed them and then I couldn't compare them to anything. So I'll probably keep this set unless the Encore Plus Mark II Infineon Edition comes out wherever the fuck it would be. Um, and then I'll sell these and keep those. But yeah, so yard sales first to 10th of every month. I ship free content to the United States and Canada and half shipping international. And then sound demos, which I talked about. Only available to subscribe star subscribers and Patreon supporters. Just keeping it off YouTube. I can't, like, just can't. I just can't with YouTube, all right? I just can't. Just accept that. No more copyright strikes. Um, and then for $10 a month, you get into the private behind the scenes Telegram chat, where to ask me questions directly. There's over 200 members in that channel right now. It'll get reset at the new year, and every three months, we sort of like make sure it's only current subscribers. But over 200 people, you could ask questions to me, you could ask questions to them. You could just show off your stuff. It's super cool. And, you also get into a lifetime swap meet channel once you're in that chat where you can post things for sale and buy, sell, and trade gear. We've cleaned that up recently and got rid of a lot of older stuff that had already sold. Um, so that's happening. And yeah, wallpapers are available in the wallpaper hoard. If you want every wallpaper I've ever used in every review for the last decade, you can by installing Resilio Sync and clicking the link in the description below. Click that link that says wallpaper hoard. It'll say, hey, install this thing. It's Resilio Sync is, was originally a bit torrent client that uh, it basically just, everyone who's syncing my wallpapers is syncing them, so I don't have to upload a billion times. It's great, it's great. There's like 5,000 people in there. Um, we done, I'm done, you're done, we're done. Thank you.